WFYI podcasts are brought to you by Visit Bloomington. Bloomington, Indiana is home to a wide range of live music events and venues. More info on upcoming performances at musicbloomington.com. This is WFYI News Now. It's November 29th, and I'm Abriana Heron. Later on in the show, a new group led by Indiana Chief Justice Loretta Rush plans to discuss problems in the legal profession, including the attorney shortage and education reform. We have to look at that. I mean, we're responsible for quality. We want to make sure when somebody goes into an attorney's office that they're going to get quality representation. That's coming up. But first, these headlines. A former Indiana lawmaker has pleaded guilty to a fraud charge in connection with a casino corruption scheme. Former Indiana State Representative Sean Eberhardt entered his plea before a judge in federal court in Indianapolis on Tuesday. Eberhardt is accused of supporting a 2019 bill allowing Spectacle Entertainment to buy and relocate two casinos in exchange for the promise of future employment with a $350,000 salary. Sentencing will take place at a later date. Eberhardt did not speak with reporters following the hearing. People who enter the home detention program at Marion County Community Corrections will receive food through a new initiative. WFYI's Jill Sheridan reports on the idea behind the plan, which came from local case managers. The Welcome Home Initiative will provide food and hygiene products to people leaving the jail for home detention. MCCC Executive Director Scott Hull says people are being processed at all hours of the day. This is an opportunity now for those individuals who might be leaving in the evening, you know, after pantries and, and different things have already closed for the day, and, and them having something to help them through, you know, a day, two days, three days. In the past, Community Corrections has only given people some information as they enter the electronic monitoring program. The new approach will provide a small kit with essentials that people can pick out. Community Corrections does not know how many may be served every month. The agency has partnered with Northview Church to provide the food. I'm Jill Sheridan, WFYI News. Elise Nishala is Indiana's new state comptroller. Indiana Public Broadcasting's Brandon Smith reports Governor Eric Holcomb appointed her to the position Tuesday. The state comptroller pays Indiana's bills and works with local governments to distribute local tax revenue. Holcomb says Nishala's experience as president of the Boone County Council and leader of the Indiana County Council's Association positions her perfectly to step into the role. She's worked with the legislature. She's worked with counties, cities, towns. Um, She's been about transparency. Nishala praised the fiscal stewardship of Indiana leaders and her predecessor, Tara Klutz, as she begins the job this week. I am fully on board to write the next chapters for our state in financial responsibility on behalf of Hoosiers. Nishala can serve out the remainder of Klutz's term, which expires in 2026. For Indiana Public Broadcasting, I'm Brandon Smith at the State House. Narcan is a life-saving medication that reverses opioid overdoses. But in two-thirds of adolescent overdose deaths, the medication wasn't used even though there was some nearby. Side Effects Public Media's Alex Lee reports on an effort in Indiana to address the growing concern. In a letter to schools nationwide, the White House and the Department of Education said when teenagers buy opioid pain medication or prescription stimulants on social media, they can end up receiving a pill with fentanyl in it. Jim Ginder is with the Hamilton County Health Department in Indiana. He says schools need to be on high alert because fentanyl can be ingested in different ways. But I think something that it's really important to understand that people just aren't vaping um, e-juice. They can vape heroin, they can vape fentanyl, all that type of stuff as, as well, too. Ginder says their health department recently trained school educators and staff on the signs and symptoms of an opioid overdose and how to administer Narcan. I'm Alex Lee, Side Effects Public Media. And for our final story today, Indiana Chief Justice Loretta Rush says she's convening a new group to study the future of the legal profession. That's as Indiana, like many states, faces an attorney shortage. State court leaders say younger attorneys aren't replacing older ones, especially in rural areas. In the Indiana Supreme Court's latest annual report shows that the bar passage rate declined in the last fiscal year. Rush notes that Oregon will no longer require the bar exam to practice. 
We have to look at that. I mean, we're responsible for quality. We want to make sure when somebody goes into an attorney's office that they're going to get quality representation. She also says Indiana should study other states when it comes to issues beyond legal education. With regard to limited license attorneys, licensed paralegals, non-lawyer ownership of law firms. Rush says she was recently named to a national commission on legal education reform. She indicated that there will likely be no single solution to the ongoing challenge. That's all for today's episode of WFYI News Now. Our podcast is produced by the following people who live in your community. Darian Benson, Kendall Antron, who composed the music for this podcast, and me, Abriana Heron. Our news director is Sarah Neil Estes. If you liked today's episode, remember to subscribe and share and find us wherever you get your podcasts to hear more stories about your community. Thank you for listening. We'll be back tomorrow with more local news and headlines. WFYI podcasts are brought to you by Visit Bloomington. Bloomington, Indiana is home to a wide range of live music events and venues. More info on upcoming performances at musicbloomington.com.